Justice. I'd like to add my welcome to you all, uh, whether you're joining us online or in person. So let us, uh, let us pray before we come back to that passage that Luke kindly read for us. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you that despite all that is going on in this world, Jesus remains on the throne. He remains Lord. Your word remains true and you remain the same, always unchanging, yesterday, today and forever. We thank you that we can continue to gather in person and virtually under your word to strengthen and encourage one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray by your spirit you would use your word in us to change us, to love Jesus more and to keep striving forward for his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, today we're going to begin a new sermon series from the book of Acts. Now, before we do, I, I want each of us to consider what is our agenda for the rest of this year, or even for next year, now that the pandemic has slowed down and lockdown has ended. Perhaps you're, you're now looking forward uh, to a holiday abroad in 2022. Or if you're working, maybe like me, you're looking forward to returning to your workplace rather than to continue to work from home. I haven't myself actually been to my office at Stratford since I think March 2020. So it's been a long time. Or possibly you're aiming to improve your fitness because being locked uh, in lockdown for such a long time, it's not that great for us. Or maybe you want to be more environmentally conscious by getting rid of your car to help lower carbon emissions, which actually is not a bad idea at the moment. But if you are here as a Christian or here to investigate the Christian faith, the real question worth thinking about is what is Jesus's agenda for today in a post-pandemic world? Now, some of you may be thinking, does Jesus even have an agenda? There's so many things going wrong, and very little going right. Is Jesus even present in our world? Well, let's turn back to that passage that, that Luke read for us. If you have a church Bible, Acts 1 verses 1 to 11 is on page 1090. And straight away we see in verse 1 that the book of Acts is the second volume of Luke's Gospel. It's a sequel and it is being written to Theophilus just as the first volume was. So although we don't know much about this chap uh, for Theophilus, we do know that he was also the original reader of Luke's Gospel, just as he's the original reader of the Book of Acts. So he's already heard of Jesus' big promises, because as it says in verse 1, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. So Theophilus had heard how Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah, the man who was going to put the world right with God, the one through the whole of the Old Testament, the whole of the Old Testament pointed to, he would rid the world of evil and sin, and he'll be restoring the brokenness of God's people. But in reality, Jesus was nowhere to be seen. His followers were being persecuted under harsh Roman rule. 
They were often rejected by society and even by members of their own family. So what was Jesus's agenda in the first century? Well, the answer is found in both Luke's gospel and in Acts. The purpose of these two books was to instill confident, confidence and certainty in Jesus. So even though it doesn't look like it, Jesus still has an agenda to restore the world. And both Theophilus and ourselves can be certain of this. This certainty is found at the beginning of Luke's Gospel, which is on page 1025 of the Church Bibles, verses 1 to 4. It reads, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. So, Luke methodically spoke to eyewitnesses. He was a doctor. He wrote down everything so that we could be certain, and indeed so Theophilus could be certain. So in volume one, Luke's Gospel, we heard about all that the earthly Lord Jesus had begun to do and teach. And now here is the second volume, the sequel, which is often known as the Acts of the, of the Apostles. A better title could be the Acts of the Risen Lord Jesus, as it goes on to tell us about what Jesus continues to do and teach today. Both books serve the same purpose to instill confidence and certainty in Jesus and reveal his agenda. The key difference is one establishes the certainty of the earthly Lord Jesus and the other one establishes the certainty of the heavenly Lord Jesus. So neither Theophilus or ourselves have seen Jesus physically. But this does not mean he doesn't have an agenda for today and for the future. So let's dig deeper into these verses and see the three main points of Jesus' agenda. We see at the end of verse 2, the first thing on Jesus' agenda is to choose apostles. An apostle is simply a messenger, a representative or envoy. But what really matters is their witness of the risen Christ. Verse 3 reads, After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. Now, many of these convincing proofs are described in Luke chapter 24, which we're not going to look at now. But if you get a chance, look at Luke chapter 24. There's the announcement by angels to the women at the tomb that Jesus had risen from the dead. Jesus was walking with two disciples on the road to Emmaus and how eventually they recognized him. Jesus had appeared specifically to Simon Peter and Jesus came right into the middle of his disciples, talking with them, eating with them, showing them his hands and his feet allowing them to touch his body so they knew he was physically there with them. So the resurrection was not wishful thinking, mass hallucination, one person's experience, or something based on just a single experience. There is solid evidence that it happened. Therefore, this makes the Book of Acts a sequel like no other. However great the Star Wars and Harry Potter sequels are in both books and films, 
the stories and characters like Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Harry Potter, Lord Voldemort are all fictitious. The book of Acts is not fabricated. It is a factual, historical and accurate first-hand interpretation of everything Jesus' life, death, resurrection and ascension means. Luke's point is that Jesus' resurrection demonstrates that Jesus is God's king, and we can be sure of that. So what did Jesus talk to his disciples about during his 40 days back from the dead? Well, the answer is at the end of verse 3. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. So the first thing on Christ's agenda was to choose the apostles. The second thing on his agenda was to speak about the kingdom of God, which is, of course, closely re uh, associated with putting the world right. And what would empower them to do this? I will read verses 4 and 5. It says, on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So it's the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what would serve to help them pass on to others the significant message that through Jesus' life, death, resurrection and ascension, and ultimately his return, the world would be restored and put right with God, as it was before sin and evil entered it. Then in verse 6, Jesus' disciples had a question for him. Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, this may look like, like Jesus' disciples have misunderstood Jesus' teaching and his mission. It kind of appeared that they were focused on a political Israel. But please, do notice how Jesus refutes the timing of this, but not the kingdom of Israel. He tells them in verse 7 that it is not for them to know the times and dates. God the Father has set the dates by his own authority. Those who knew the Old Testament writings of the prophets, like Isaiah, Ezekiel and Joel, trusted in a future when God promised he would pour out his spirit to rest restore his kingdom Israel. But it's not only Israel, but the whole world. And then we come to the third and final point on Jesus' agenda. This is made clear in verse 8. And it's the same agenda as it was in AD 33, as it is today in 2021. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The worldwide spread of Jesus' resurrection, the gospel message, is our agenda today, as individuals and as a church. We too, like the apostles, don't get to speculate when this worldwide task will be finished. It is God the Father's decision. And until then, the agenda is fixed. We need to be certain of what Jesus wants us to be doing. Jesus could return today, tomorrow, next week, or in a thousand years. The question is, are we ready for it? 
Now we are fortunate we live in this part of the world where we don't face persecution for our Christian faith like some parts of the world do. But we do live in a society that is constantly telling us not to tell others about Jesus. A society that likes to make up its own agenda and its own mind. So when we consider how governments around the world change their political agenda once they've been voted in, or how we are often quick to break our New Year resolutions, we see how Jesus' agenda is to be trusted. The worldwide spread of the gospel for 2,000 years. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, once did. And that's why we are here today. If we call ourselves Christian, we are beneficiaries of the global spread of the gospel. I myself, I miss the gospel. It passed over my head when I was in Greece. I didn't hear it in Cyprus, but I received the gospel message in Walthamstow. Thank you. That's when I received it. This letter we are looking at today is many years and many miles from where it was written. It was not hindered by geography, language or nationality. It is for everyone. It's for our family, it's for our neighbours, it's for our work colleagues and fellow students. It's for all young and old, rich or poor. And I suggest that today, this is the biggest, most significant thing that's happening in our world today. Because it's a broken world. We've only just got to put on the news and there's never any good news. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that our agenda to get fit or to go on holiday or to protect the environment are wrong but they are pale in significance compared with Jesus' agenda to restore this entire world, God's great salvation plan, where he will deal once and forever with the sin, the death, the sickness and broken creation through the message of Christ's resurrection and ultimate return. Now you are all welcome to be part of our agenda to be witnesses for Christ. We aim to be equipped through our Christian discipleship program, which is focused on passion for life evangelism for 2022, or even just helping out wherever you can in, in the TOTS group on a Monday. It's great. It's just a great way to build relationships with the local community. Now, please, if anyone does need more time, Please do keep coming back to hear more of the acts of the risen Lord Jesus. Because Luke's goal is the same as in his gospel, to give you certainty. You're welcome to ask questions if you're not certain of anything. We have an elders and women's ministry team the details are on the service sheet. But the important thing to remember is the task ahead is urgent. That's why the two men dressed in white stood beside them in verse 11 and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Jesus has given us all his agenda for today. The entire world is our harvest field. And he has actually placed many of the world's nations right here in London. So we can't be rooted on the spot looking into the sky. We need to be part of his plan. 
I will close us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray you would help us by your Holy Spirit be part of your great plan of salvation so that many would come to know you and call upon your name and be saved. We ask this for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen.